podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No breaks, no breaks, no fear, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Looking back on everything that's happened over the last seven days and ahead to what's coming up in British Speedway. I'm Ian Brannan and we have reaction from the Adrian Flux Arena as Kingsland's new man helps secure the points. I think I'm, I was a good set up uh, and uh, yeah, was was good and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to be in England. Our main guest in this week's episode is Bellevue Aces CEO and team manager Mark Lemon, talking all about the Aces, their return to action after a three-week gap, and looking ahead to the Speedway of Nations, a massive event in the World Speedway calendar. Why we're doing the Speedway of Nations, um, we want greater things, such as the Speedway Grand Prix in Manchester. That's what we're aiming for. We, we know that the stadium is, is being built and designed to host international events. And after he scored 16 points for the Oxford Spires on Monday night, we get to know Matt Sejanowski a little bit better, including which seat is his favourite on a plane? I need to, I need to put my head somewhere, and it's always 3A. Uh, I always reserve the same seat. Hear more from Magic in part three. We've also got action from the Cab Direct Championship and we've got interviews with Danny King after he made his successful return from injury for the Red Car Bears. We also hear from Paco Castagna of the Edinburgh Monarchs and a full look ahead to all the fixtures coming up in British Speedway over the coming week. All on British Speedway's official podcast. No breaks, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along, another week in British Speedway, a relatively quiet one it's been, and a fairly quiet one ahead, to be honest, but uh, there's plenty going on over the coming month, and uh, you want to stay around for that interview with Mark Lemon, uh, talking all things Bellevue, but also Speedway of Nations, and much more besides in the next part. But first of all, we'll just round up the action from Monday night in the Rome Motor Oil Premiership. The Kingsland Stars keeping up their recent improvement with an all-round team performance to defeat Oxford 50-40 in Monday's televised fixture. Each of the seven Stars riders won at least one race and an impressive debut from new signing Jan Kvek, who took the flag twice and scored nine points in all. He also collected the Omologato Rider of the Night Award. Benjamin Basso top scoring for the Stars with 10 plus one. Former Kingsland rider Matt Sejanowski enjoying his best night back in UK racing with a superb 16-point haul for the Spires, but his teammates suffered numerous mechanical issues and that aggregate point also went to the Stars as well. Let's hear from a few of those involved in the fixture starting off with that new signing then and he was uh, rider of the night Jan Kvek chatting with Scott Nichols. Jan your first night racing in British Speedway you must be really happy with how you performed. Oh, it's amazing amazing night uh, yeah I'm very happy uh, I'm a little bit mistake last heat and uh, lost the points but uh, yeah it was amazing amazing race amazing uh, amazing uh, night and I'm very happy. How nervous were you before that first race? Uh, not too much, not too much. Uh, I like this track, uh, but I was a little bit nervous uh, because I, I don't know much the setup on this uh, this track, on English track. But uh, I think I'm, I was good setup, uh, and uh, yeah, was was good, and I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to be in England. I'm sure the Kingsland Stars fans happy to have Jan Kvek in Norfolk as well, kicking off life with nine points. Only one behind top scorer Benjamin Basso, who bagged 10 plus one bonus, including some tasty battles with a former teammate of his, Chris Harris. Of course, he rode with at Peterborough and Glasgow uh, last season. And Ben Basso has been chatting to Abby Stevens on Eurosport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we had some good battles. And, <laughs> and you got the better of him? Yeah, I did. I did tonight. Um... Chris is one of my good friends and it's always fun battling against your friends and, and winning as well. That's the most important. So And to still be friends afterwards. <laughs> of course, we will always be friends. Ben, a real solid performance, one to seven from the stars. And it just looks like there's a balance of this team where it suddenly feels like it clicks. Yeah, I feel like we are getting more and more in balance with the track and how we want it prepared and the setups and all that. And it's just a nice additional thing that Jan has come um, to help and I think it's going to get a bit more stability in the team because we've been like changing riders, getting a lot of guest bookings and it's just nice to have the same team always. Yeah, when that consistency is there and the fact that he came in with that motivation, that kind of fresh blood almost seemed to rejuvenate everyone else around him as well. Yeah, and he did well tonight and I actually let him pick the, the gate in Heat 15 because it's his debut and he did so well, well good already. So yeah, it's just nice to have him. 
And the spirit amongst you all, actually, there's a, there's a few Danes in the camp. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, it's actually uh, the English-Danish team, this one. Um, no, it's nice, and we actually don't speak Danish when we are in the pits, you know, no. so everyone can be in on it. Um, but, yeah, it's good fun. Oh, that's super sweet. Um, look, it's a great performance from you and the rest of the team tonight. A really important win, and hopefully this now just sets you guys on a different pace for the rest of the season. Hopefully we can get, uh, keep it going, and I actually believe that we can. You know, we, we beat um, what was Sheffield last week and Oxford today, and, yeah, we're on a roll, and we just need to keep it going. High point for the Oxford Spires then was Matt Sejanowski, of course, uh, used to be a rider for the Kingsland Stars a number of years ago, back in 2012, so has a lot of experience of the Adrian Flux Arena circuit, including how it's all set up at the start. He likes the grippy starts, as he's been discussing with Abby Stevens. You know, um, a grip start is uh, comp like different. Um, I prefer grip start, definitely. But uh, I spent here one year. Uh, I was enjoying today. Everything was working from the beginning, uh, so I'm very happy because this, uh, this season in England has been uh, difficult after the, the, this long break, but uh, I have really good fun tonight. Yeah. And that feeling must be so special, Magic, maybe even sweeter when it hasn't been going so well, but you just looked so full of confidence, actually off the bike, but certainly on it. Yeah, um, you know, when everything works good, you, uh, you find good setup, then you can relax more on the bike and everything, uh, everything is uh, much easier when you're, not, when you're not sure about the setup and about your riding. My first two hits been uh, today. Maybe I was not so sure which lines uh, to use or uh, how this outside line is going to work for me. Uh, but in my, after two hits, I said to myself, like, you need to uh, attack more. Like I, I mean, not not the the opponents, not the uh, riders uh, from the home team. I'm I need to attack more my bike. Yeah. You know, like uh, be more sure what I'm doing, and uh, and it was working good. I'm I'm very enjoying. Oh, you did see that attacking style. It was kind of written all over your body language. It's just so amazing when you're riding with that kind of confidence to watch. Um, for Oxford, though, I mean, all the drama was happening really in the pits, and and, and luckily not yours. Yes, um, that was a hard night for, uh, for our team. Uh, Rohan has uh, a lot of problem, problems with his bikes and uh, I hope uh, we're going to fix that till the next uh, meeting and, uh, and fight for more points. Yeah, it's uh, certainly hotting up in the Roe Motor Oil Premiership, certainly for the uh, playoff places. The um, Oxford Spires remain in that uh, fourth position at the moment, but it is getting fairly tight between themselves and Leicester. Um, there were plenty of mechanical issues, particularly for Rowan Tungate in the fixture, including having to rebuild his bike in the pit. Let's hear about those woes now with uh, Scott Nichols chatting to Rowan Tungate. Yeah, it was <laughs> not what I wanted, and um, I snapped the frame in the, in the last corner and snapped the chain. And we tried to change things around and found the problem with the with the frame and yeah it was a big disaster for me and not what I wanted and not like a how like a how it to be yeah so um, still got a couple of wins I felt good on the track and I'm just disappointed I didn't get to, to get more time on the track as it was actually really nice tonight. Yeah, the track looked really good. Like you say, the races you complete, you look fantastic. But obviously just a frustrating night for the team. Obviously, I know Pete Schrock, the team manager, will be pretty furious with the situation. You can bounce back, but I know you guys were to come here looking for the win, so it's a tough night. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, we need to be a bit more professional, definitely. My bikes need to be a lot better, and we're going to go back to the workshop and, and sort everything out, and hopefully other boys can do the same. So, um, yeah, we're going we're to come back and, and, and be stronger next time. So looking at the Rome Motor Oil Premiership table after that fixture on Monday, leaves it looking like this. The Ipswich Witches at the top of the table, racing 11 meetings, 21 points on the board. Sheffield Tigers are second. They've got 10 meetings ridden and 17 points. The Bellevue Aces have ridden 11 with 17 as well. And of course, the Bellevue Aces head to Ollerton on Thursday to face the Sheffield Tigers with the winner of that uh, cementing their place second in the table at this moment in time. Oxford Spires have ridden 12 and they've got 13 points on the board. Uh, Leicester Lions 10 meetings ridden and 12 uh, points and the Birmingham Brummies are 6 with 11 ridden and 6 points and the Kingsland Stars, well, that victory on Monday night uh, trebling their score. Effectively 9 meetings ridden and they move on to 4 points. They did have 2 points deducted 
which uh, they are still appealing, I believe, as well. Um, but uh, at the moment in time, with those two points removed, they are on four points from nine meetings ridden. That's how the Rome Motor Oil Premiership table looks. And looking back at last week, uh, well, we had uh, a meeting at Oxford. The Oxford Spires were taking on the Ipswich Witches, beaten by the weather, though, as their Rome Motor Oil Premiership clash at Cowley was abandoned after six heats due to the rain. The Witches appeared well-placed for an away win. They led 23-13. Emil Saifudinov having won his three rides, but the meeting will need to be rerun. A new date also required for Leicester versus Kings Lynn, which was postponed earlier in the day as well. So the weather getting the better of those two fixtures. Uh, we did manage to uh, get a chat, though, with two of the riders who did get out on the track, even though maybe briefly in Eric Riss's case. We'll hear from Eric Riss first of the Oxford Spires and Adam Ellis of the Ipswich Witches. Yeah, it's frustrating that, you know, we had to, or the meeting got cancelled in the end. Um, well, it wasn't the end yet, but uh, it's a shame it got cancelled. I mean, the forecast was terrible all day um, but I think there was really limited uh, availabilities of, of fixtures in case uh, we didn't run it today so the club tried everything to get it on and they got it on the weather was clearing up a little bit uh, before the meeting and the track was actually dry at first um, and then obviously it started raining and uh, yeah then the track was unsafe to ride um, yeah for me it was it was good I only had one race so <laughs> it's not a lot you know but I won the, the one that I had but you were um, obviously some of your teammates had some difficulty, particularly that third and fourth turn. A couple of riders were picking up some grip there, weren't they, and, and spinning the bike around, and that was really. Yeah, nice. I think the track was getting greasy very quickly. Um, I think pretty much after my race, it was because it was constantly raining. You know, uh, it didn't stop, um, so the track was getting more and more greasy, and uh, you know, we all set our bikes up how we usually do, and uh, then it gets really greasy and you know you have way too many revs and you come down the straight flat out and you just spin around like we've seen it a few times made a difference i think tonight track was tricky so uh, being out in front made it a lot easier but uh yeah 10 points up and it's been it's been tough recently without without jason in the team and having guests in every week but everyone's really pulled together and performing well so uh yeah coming here we knew it was going to be particularly hard uh, oxford are, are good around here so to be 10 points up and and uh, you know not be able to carry on is frustrating but you know we we're, we're in good spirits we're in a good position in the league and uh, i think if we if we can keep this form up we can keep on pushing yeah, and a boost for the Ipswich Witches. Danny King set to regain his place back in the team after that injury. He had a match with the Red Car Bears last week and he did very well indeed. Made it to Heat 15, scored a hat full of points and certainly looked like his uh, usual self. So uh, he's going to be lining up uh, on f uh, Thursday as the Ipswich Witches face the Leicester Lions. Sheffield Tigers versus the Bellevue Aces. And that's an 8 o'clock start time at Ollerton on Thursday to accommodate the football England playing on Thursday night so it starts slightly later 8 o'clock the start time uh, Ipswich versus Leicester they don't usually start their meeting till around about 10 to 8 anyway traditionally is uh, how it usually goes so I guess the football will be uh, about done by by then you would think um, and the other fixture in the Road Motor All Premiership next Monday we've got action uh, from uh, the National Speedway Stadium the Bellevue Aces versus the Leicester Lions Birmingham Brummies against the Kings Lynn Stars Kings Lynn have uh, an advantage in that one uh, heading into that fixture at Perry Bar, but of course that'll be a home debut for Freddie Lindgren as well on uh, Monday in the Road Motor All Premiership. And we'll stay on the subject of that fixture on Eurosport, Bellevue versus Leicester, because in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, we're chatting with the man very much in charge of day-to-day uh, -day activities at the National Speedway Stadium, Mark Lemon, team manager and CEO of the Bellevue Aces, joins us in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. Welcome back. I'm Ian Brannan and our spotlight in this part of the podcast very much firmly falls on the Bellevue Aces and everything going on at the National Speedway Stadium. It's a busy time of year, although not so much on the track. The Bellevue Colts were in action on Monday, but prior to that, there hadn't been any action on the Speedway track since May the 27th, when the Bellevue Aces raced against the Sheffield Tigers in that rain-affected bank holiday Monday meeting. But they're back in action after about three weeks off 
as they head to uh, Ollerton to take on the Sheffield Tigers this Thursday. But lots going on in Manchester. Of course, it's going to be the focal point of World Speedway with the Speedway of Nations heading there from the 9th of July. I'm pleased to say that CEO and team manager of the Bellevue Aces, Mark Lemon, joins us. Um, Lemo, while well, you've been sort of sat on the sidelines, I guess, watching uh, all the action happen around you and in many cases uh, people catching up on the meetings it's uh, certainly not been uh, a case that you've been having your feet up there's been a lot of work going on at the national speedway stadium yeah it's certainly been full gas and on the bat wheel behind the scenes there's no doubt about that with uh, the, the preparations and you know the upcoming events we've got going on here in manchester uh, but you know the aces obviously uh we ha- have gone into a little bit of a break um it's not you know the best sort of calendar scheduling that's probably you know in our favor but uh, never mind that's we'll get the fixtures in we, you know, we had a, you know, a host of early fixtures a run of like a good run of form and the fixtures but uh, yeah like i said the boys have gone into a bit of a lull now uh, we've had you know colts meeting last night so there's, uh, hasn't like been that bellevue has stopped racing it's just we haven't seen the aces on track for a little bit and um you know and obviously it re- re- reignites this thursday at sheffield and then back back home on soil on on monday that previous Bank Holiday Monday fixture, obviously, it was it was rain affected, um, and it was a win for the Sheffield Tigers in the end. Um, a frustrating one, of course. It's one of those cases you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Sometimes as a promoter, but um, what's your start, side of the story with it? Because obviously, a lot's been a lot's been said. Everybody's had their opinion. What, where do you stand on it now? Uh, looking back on it from the distance of a few weeks ago. Yeah, there's two sides to every story. Um, you know, obviously, the British weather. This 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 spring, this this season has uh, has been dreadful. Uh, there's been many many rain offs, and um, we'd been quite fortunate. You know, we, we hadn't actually had any any dry meetings as such, uh, and we've been very you know, lucky that the, the, the National Speedway Stadium can handle you know a lot of weather and take you know, a, a big hit. But uh, on this particular occasion, we had a you know a bank holiday afternoon to get the whole fixture in. You know, the heavens opened up, and, and just the way it, everything just panned out you know um we had a we had a wi-fi go down and sort of like the the, the, the large queues out the front of the stadium so the st- start got slightly delayed and then obviously when the prey got delayed you know the, the heavens you know, opened up when we were out for heat one and then um so processes stopped after heat one to, to let the rain pass but yeah it was just you know showers coming and going but you know there was quite a few large downpours uh that you know the track took you know a lot of Lot, lot more that can probably handle. So we had a pause in proceedings. Well, we, we got through to heat ten, and the racing wasn't pretty. You know, no one can disagree with that. Um, but you know, obviously the, the Tigers adapted to the, the circumstances way better than we did, and um, yeah, they got a, a healthy ten point lead. But you know, gate positions and how things pan out, you know, it can go in favour for a certain ter- team at a particular time and, and, and swing the pendulum as as the event goes on but nonetheless uh we the track staff Andy marathon his crew did a great job getting the track back but uh there's a lot of slop on the outside you know that's been been there many many times before but uh the powers that be just thought it wasn't safe enough and they, they pulled the pin on us at the 11th hour and, and, and what i think what was quite annoying for us and our perspective was we probably could have moved that that material from the track given given notice but um uh the referee made the decision um uh, when he did and, and didn't give us a choice to actually try and uh, do any more remedial work on the track. So disappointing, but, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, but, you know, we will bounce back. I think, uh, you know, we didn't really speak as a group for some time after that because everyone was sort of hurting. And uh, But you look over the course of the years, you know, it's very rare you see many teams go through not being beaten at home. Um, so it's better off to lose in, in May than in September. So we just uh, we, we put that one behind us and move forward yeah and you move forwards to uh, to Olerton and uh, to uh, very immediately uh, with, with a break of three weeks uh, renew rivalries with Sheffield and um, always a you know a great contest between the two sides uh, you know a classic rivalry and it's maybe had a bit of extra spice because of course Bellevue winning the league title there not so long ago and I think maybe what happened on Bank Holiday Monday might Add for a bit of extra banter as well. I know the Bentu Barmy Army have invested in, uh, in in a lot of umbrellas, uh, so uh, you know there'll be a few uh, a few jibes there, I'm sure. But um, looking forward to get back on track on uh, on on Thursday in the league. Yeah, the Barmy Army definitely have probably seen too much sun, sunshine, so uh, yeah, definitely they cover up. But um, no, there's yeah, there's 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 rivals in sport, and that's great. You know that we've got one with um, it's so healthy 
against Sheffield. You know, obviously, you know, winning the league against them at the at Alton Stadium in 2022 was you know, definitely a highlight and something I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, obviously they, they had a, a great year last year. You know, but you know, I guess you got to remember, you know, Bellevue Aces were the, the, the best team all year last year, and unfortunately, we had the injury to Charles Wright in the playoffs. You know, it, you know, dinted us, and uh, obviously we bailed out at the semi final stage, but. Um, yeah, like I said, a healthy r- rival there. Uh, we look forward to the, the, the banter and the, uh, the, 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 the abuse that we probably get from the terrace as well when you're in that you know, confined pit space uh, right on the edge of the, uh, you know, the supporters. But, um, yeah, we, we just like – we will readdress things and go there. And um, obviously we're, we're not going to have, um, you know, Brady Kurtz, who's you know, obviously got a recurring injury now with that, that ligament uh, damage that he picked up in Sweden a couple of weeks ago. Um, so he's had to sit out on the sidelines after having, you know, 12 point maximum in Sweden. Um, but obviously it's just flared up the injury again. So, you know, we've, we've got a guest in, uh, Chris Bummer Harris, uh, he loves it around Sheffield. So, um, hopefully he'll, he'll step up and, uh, wear that number plate well, but yeah, we've got, we've got a very capable team that can go and do a job that, uh, Sheffield done to us. So that's yeah, game on. To lose your captain, but also a rider who was contributing the points in, you know, in, in the massive ways for the Bellevue Aces in Brady Kurtz was a massive loss. Um, what is the latest with Brady? Because obviously, he's, he's, I think he's been making some form of comebacks on, on the continent. How's that gone? And, and when do you expect him to be back in an Aces race jacket? Yeah, so Brady's targeting July the 1st to make a return. Um, so he feels like he needs to sit out for another couple of weeks. And, and if anyone's ever done it, you know, ligament damage, it can take six months. Um, and Speedway Riders, obviously, are, you know, you've got you know, a short season to make hay while the sun shines and uh, or where the rain falls, one of, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, so it's, it's going to be one of those, I think, the end of the year where he's just going to have to manage the injury. I mean, Jason Doyle won a world championship with a broken foot, you know, so uh, it's doable, but it's it's not pleasant. You know, you, whenever a rider goes out on the track, they want to be 100% fit to to give it their all. But um, sometimes you've got to sort of work around and ride around injuries, which is never ideal. But, you know, you look at Brady, it's it's come at probably the worst possible time. He's probably in the best form of his life. Um, and, these, you know, the results have just been oozing sort of confidence when he's been on the track and uh, he's a great captain for the aces. Uh, so he's a big mister to, to take out of the lineup, but you know, he'll, he'll come back. Um, I, I'd like to say he'd be fitter and stronger than he went, but you know, as I said, this is going to be a longevity injury. That's probably going to take six months to, 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 to manage to get to the healing. Cause you know, the best thing you can do in speedway or in sport with a, a, a such as an injury is what he's got is actually, you know, sit out for three months, but um uh, that's hopefully not going to be the case. Uh, we we want him back, uh, but obviously you've got to be sensible about the decisions as well. But so yeah, we're targeting July the first. And while it has been um, a bit of a quiet period for the Aces, you do have um, quite a busy July to to make up for it. And of course, there's a Speedway of Nations to come, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. But over this past few weeks, it has evened out a bit in the road motor all premiership table. Bellevue currently sitting in third with 11 meetings ridden and on 17 points. Uh, Sheffield have got a meeting in hand there also on on 17. And then just looking down the the table as well, you know, you've got uh, Oxford on 13, Leicester on 12. Um, So it could all close up pretty quickly. You've got to ride both of those sides, um, I think home and away in the next month or so um, in, in Oxford and Leicester. And of course, Leicester, that fixture, uh, on Monday night next week in the Romo to All Premiership, and it's live on Eurosport. So that has uh, a big bearing potentially on on playoff places. Yeah, the pressures are. I mean, like you know, you, know, you lose that that match at home. You know, you, you enter yourself into that you know third or fourth, fifth uh, position on the t- the table that you know you're, you're susceptible uh, to being eliminated, uh, which is something you want to avoid because you know the first ambition is obviously to make top four, um, and things were going pretty good until that particular bank holiday. Um, but, you know, we, we need to pick up some uh, away points on the road. We've been mighty close. Um, we probably haven't seen the best form from Dan Bewley, but, you know, winning the British final, I think, you know, that was stepping in the right direction. Um, for, you know, just getting the setups right for the UK has been sort of, you know, challenging for Dan just of, of late. Um, you know, we, we all know how talented he is, but we haven't seen the best of Dan. Uh, I think we're probably on the, on the verge of that now. So hopefully that, that pushes us on. Uh, towards the playoffs, but yeah, it's Ipswich. You know, taking a major blow, losing Jason Doyle. 
very hard man to replace and I, I don't know really how they're going to do it. Um, so, you know, you don't wish any you know, bad on other, other clubs and you want the fiercest competition as, as you can get. But, um, you know, it would be very difficult for uh, Ipswich to manage, you know, that, that start of the season that they, they had and they'll see Sheffield. You know, the, those three teams, you know, like Sheffield, Ipswich and now Sales are probably the informed teams where a few other teams have dropped, you know, home matches or two or three home matches. And that uh, really can make a big difference at the end of the day, but puts a lot of pressure on those away uh, results. And on the subject of the away results and, you know, looking ahead to July, as you mentioned, you may have Brady Kurtz back with you um, by then. But it's a busy time on the road, isn't it? After the Speedway of Nations, you've got quite a few, um, you know, big away trips to the likes of Oxford. You've got um, Ipswich away. You've got Leicester and Birmingham before the end of the month as well. So it's, you know, it's it's a busy time on the road for those uh, for those away points and they come thick and fast after the Speedway of Nations. Yeah, it's, it's it, well, it's, it's funny how it's sort of, it's spun this year because last year, you know, we had such a dominant season at, um, you know, with the Aces, uh, by far the best team, you know, in the, in the home and away um, series. But uh, we got to the end of the season, we completed all our fixtures and we were waiting for other teams to complete you know, and finalise before we got the playoffs and the playoffs got pushed back. So it meant we had an extended period of, of no racing, a bit like we are, we're in the, at the moment right now, the period we're you're seeing. So maybe, you know, it could actually do us a, you know, a massive favour being busy towards the end and getting plenty of track time, you know, come playoffs. So, you know, you, you got to take the, the yin and the yang with it. Um, so the, I'm, I'm quite confident that the boys will be there, but uh, they've just got to do their jobs. And if they do their jobs well, then you know we'll be playoffs again for you know another another uh, campaign. You've had little action for uh, for the Aces, but um, as we mentioned, there, there's other stuff going on. Not least, they had the, the British final at the National Speedway Stadium. How did that go? From your point of view, as um, you know, one of the event organisers, really, in in terms of having um, a meeting on on a Saturday, in terms of having you know the three Grand Prix riders on show as well, because I think it delivered as a as a spectacle. The the racing got better. You know, we had a good racing, a good final, and of course a home winner as well in Dan Bewley. So surely the the home crowd must have been pretty pleased. Yeah, as a club, we're really honoured to be able to host the, the, the you know the Premier uh, the the British final. It's uh, such a you know prestigious event on the, on the calendar and uh, to hold any national uh, championship. But uh, you know, f- for me as a promoter, like it, it was a real pleasure to see how that panned out. You know, for once we had dry weather, you know, for the first time this season and the lineup was fantastic. You know, the, the, the board and, and, you know, the guys that uh, assembled to make sure that we got, you know, Robert Lambert and, and both the, you know, well, all the three, you know, top GP riders in that final, which we haven't seen for a number of years was, you know, just immense. Uh, and I think the racing was, you know, out of the world, um, great coverage you know, on Eurosport. And I think that, you know, it might be by saying, but I think that the stadium looked a treat too on the particular night. Um, so it's, it was, it was just a perfect night, you know, great crowd, uh, it was near sellout, which is what you want. And, you know, I, I sort of, you, you talk about the, the weekend events and, and opposed to the, the weekdays. Yeah. I, I just wonder if it was actually a Monday, whether we would have got a bigger crowd because, you know, We've seen in the past, last time when we had it before we had the rain off, we actually got a bigger crowd on the Monday than we did on the Sunday. But um, so even with the best stars there on lineup on show, I just wonder if the Monday may have actually been a sellout, but we'll never know. But uh, either day, Saturday night was Speedway night and it was, a, it was a great, I think it was a great result for British Speedway. I mean, some of the keyboard warriors, Mark, will tell you there wasn't enough racing in it. But, uh, you know, not, not everyone's going to be a classic, is it? <laughs> but I thought it was a fantastic evening. Evening. Uh, there was an overtake in every single heat. I know, because I went through, through every single race just to have a look, and there was. Um, but, of course, terrific final, fantastic result as well. And, um, you know, it uh, yeah, sets you up nicely for the Speedway of Nations, which is which just around the corner. I, I often wonder what those keyboard warriors actually see sometimes. But, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I think it was, a, you know, it was a pretty special event. The race in here, whether it's National League, you know, even British Youth Development League or, or, or competitions, uh, this track just lends to good racing because you can't, you can't defend. You've got to attack all the time. And uh, the boys meant business. Um, you know, it was great to see young Tom Brennan you know, go through the card. Uh, and, and top score and, and, and get straight through that final um, as we've watched him sort of come through the rising star program and like he's, he's been the, the, the you know the, the starring um, you know rider in that that program to go on to do see what he's done and that's fantastic 
Um, but yeah, like bummer, come to the come to the fore. And we all said like obviously to, to see Robert Lamb. It's a shame Robert Lambert didn't get through. You know, it's like it was, you know tie back on points and he just missed out, which was a shame. But you know, the, the rest of the boys stood up, and you always see it in a, in a national championship. You know, it means a lot to the riders. And um, you know, for, I think for Dan to, to get three in a row, that was a pretty special moment for everybody. And uh, the noise that the stadium made when he passed Wolfie on that you know the third lap was immense. Um, yeah, it was, it's a uh, you know, the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. So yeah. Absolutely great, great event to have here in Manchester. And I hope we can have it for many years to come. But, uh, you know, just a, an awesome showcase. And as you mentioned before, you know, maybe Dan Bewley's not had the most sparkling start to the season with Bellevue, but obviously he's shown that when 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 it's on the line, when it matters, he's, he's come to the party there with the, with the British final. And surely, you know, not that he needs the confidence, but, you know, it's, it's a feather in his cap for the season and, and shows that uh, he hasn't lost anything. It's just maybe things haven't gone his way. As you say, the weather's been not ideal. The track conditions maybe haven't been perfect in the early part of the season. So there's all those kind of things to factor in as well. It's not necessarily all about the man on the bike, is it? No, he's probably thinking about merchandise sales too. You know, you know, promoting that number one uh, <laughs> t-shirt as well. So uh, you know, it's, it, it was just great to see. I, I think Dan's you know, you know, exceptionally talent. Talent probably when he works out how good he can be, uh, look out. Well, we're going to see him in action again, I would imagine, very soon at the Speedway of Nations, which comes to the National Speedway Stadium, along with the rest of the world's stars between the 9th and the 13th of July. Massive event, this limo. Um, just give us a, an idea of the scale of, of this event. Um, and Obviously, Bellevue have hosted events similar to this in the past, you know, Speedway World Cup finals, Speedway of Nations finals. But this is a different era now under Warner Brothers Discovery. They are, uh, you know, operate things in, in their way. So just an idea of the the scale and the size of this um, task that, uh, that is before you now to, to host this massive event. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. Um, like with Warner Brothers, they're, they're, they're the giants, aren't they? They're the, they're the media and uh, what they're bringing to the event um, and what their, their requirements and, you know, requests are is is just, you know, quadrupled anything that we've ever done before in the past. So it's it's challenging to meet their, their, their requirements, but, you know, it's all for the part of the show. And as you, you can see on TV at the Grand Prix and, you know, the pre- recent World Cups and Spirit Nations, they've come in with a bang and they're, 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 they're selling it. And, they, they you know, they do put on a great show. So... Yeah, there's you know, a lot of work behind the scenes to, to manage and, and put in places. You know, when you're, you're especially when you're running out of a, a council-owned um, operative stadium, there's a lot of you know, you know boxes you got to tick and uh, paperwork and documents that uh, go on behind the scenes to make sure we we, we get anything so it it can actually work and function. Um, and like even with our owners, you know, uh, the directors Tony Rice and R- Robin Southwell, the investment they've had to make to put on this event is colossal you know it's it's they've exceeded you know well and truly over a half a million just to, to put this event on so it's a massive risk for the for the manchester speedway to, to to put this on and to probably mitigate a loss would be an absolutely a result uh dare i say it but you know there's there's bigger pictures and motivation why we're doing the speedway nations um we want greater things as such as a speedway grand prix in manchester that's what we we're aiming for we we know the the stadium is being built and designed to host international events, and that was a remit from the city council when we took over in 2017 uh, to host big, big events. So I'm hoping we can tick that box by you know having a successful Speedway of Nations, but uh, it doesn't come without uh, some long hours and late nights and um, some very uh, tiresome days trying to get uh, all the, everything in order in the preparation. Two things from that then, Lemo. That first of all, then you're suggesting that the this is not just an event for Bellevue. You know, this is this is a, a trial run, really. Your, your opportunity with Warner Brothers Discovery to to show that you can put on a big event, and really that this is maybe the gateway. Then that make a good job of this and could be on for a Grand Prix in Manchester. Well, I'd like to think so. Um, I think it, it needs it. Uh, the, the racetrack is you know the best in the world. I mean, Amanda Castagna, the CCP um, director, has stated that. Um, so it's you know it's, it's got weight. And I think if anyone has been here, you know, has never gone away and seen a bad race meeting. Um, so it has a lot to offer. Um, but, you know, th- this is the acid test. You know, we, we don't know if it's going to be supported. You know, Warner Brothers Discovery don't come in lightly um, and it's not a cheap event to put on. As, you know, we've had to, you know, you know spend over, you know, six figures in, you know, temporary grandstands to cater for the numbers. 
and there's there's license fees, there's you know, you know subscription fees, there's you know there's just so many fees that attached to it that you know you probably don't see, and just even like you know road closures and and you know the sort of operation, you know, you know teams that we have to put in place to to, to manage it. Um, there's a lot that's going on. So this this really is it. It needs to, to be supported. And we've we've come under some criticism of, of the pricing structure. And you know, I had one journalist just the other day, you know, saying it's overpriced, but yet he was quite happy to to spend ninety five pounds to go and sit in the rafters to watch the Champions League grand, uh, final at, at Wembley, and where you can you, know, you can spend that similar money and you can have one of the best views in the in the stadium, no matter where you're at. It's uh, you, you're just there, and, and we only have potentially seven thousand, you know. You know uh, supporters that can probably you know get into the the, the arena, so we're, we're we're putting our you know sort of our, our neck on the line here, and hopefully it will be supported. Uh, and I think that really just bears if it's supported. Yes, there's the potential of Grand Prix. If it's not supported, there's a real risk of you know how long you know we can operate out of this this stadium in Manchester, and, and that's not a, not a threat. Basically, we're at a point now we need to grow as a business uh, and have these big events uh, and, and, and put a, like a, a proper sustainable business model in place. And, and that means having Grand Prix. So there's a real challenge on our table right now. And I just hope everyone gets gets behind it and supports it. And, and naturally, you know, Team GB, host nation going straight through the final and, you know, get to see the likes of Poland, you know, Bartosz Smarzlik and the likes, you know, race around here. And um, hopefully it's going to be in July and it's going to be good weather as well. And, and it should be well supported, you know. It, it, as you say, these are the best riders in the world. I mean, what I would say is that I think that in Britain, I think the events would be better supported than the likes of Poland. We saw in the World Cup last year that until Poland really came into it, the you know the the, the stadium in Roslav was you know half empty, if if not less than that. Um, you know, it was only once once the home side came to the party that the fans came out. But I can't imagine that being the case here because the riders in Involved, all right, you know, either a world names from the Grand Prix, or they ride for teams uh, in in this country one way or another, or they have done in the past. That I think the fans will come out to to support all all aspects. Well, I do agree with you. Actually, like the British fans are some of the best because they they do get behind their riders because obviously they race for their, their local clubs and they come and support them. And you know, I think British people just love love their motorsport in general, so they come out and, and support it. And I hopefully that's going to be the case for this this event. Um, but no, unfortunately, you know, the way we, you know, I did a lot of homework and, and studied, you know, a lot of previous competitions. And uh, as you quite rightly, those early events are generally not supported. And you know, being the team manager for Australia and with the Australian boys, you know, we've raced in a lot, a lot, of, a lot of events with hardly anyone in, in the stadium. So we, that's how, why the, the price structure has sort of been stacked to, to offset that, that, situ- that scenario. We know they're going to come to the final. Uh, to see Team GB and the rest of the, the teams that qualify. But we, we're seeing some good support, I, I would say. It's probably like on target for what I, I you know, anticipated, uh, which is you know healthy for the numbers that we, we probably need. Um, so we just got to follow suit and the more the merrier naturally. But um, I'm hoping the boys are you know, in those particular semifinals and, and the under-21s. But the under-21s, believe it or not, is uh, the t- ticket sales have been going quite well. So you know, probably the people are coming up for the two-day event. Yeah, get down there and and support um, all of the uh, all of the teams that are going to be riding. There's going to be some cracking riders on show, and one of those teams, of course, will be Team Australia. And switching your hats majestically, I'm sure, Mark, in your office uh, from uh, from promoter to uh, team manager, um, you've got uh, Team Australia to to put out. Of course, you've had a few dramas on that front, uh, losing well, first of all, Brady Kurtz, but not least, of course, Jason Doyle out for the season, a massive loss. Um, Where's that leave you in terms of deciding who's going to make the final cut? You've got a sort of a long list of, of five to submit. Um, obviously, two names there that uh, that may well have been in the frame. Is is Brady Kurt still in in the picture? And um, how where are you at with your your team thoughts at this moment? If you can tell us that. Uh, I mean, like you know, you look at Jack Holter and, and Max Frick. Obviously, Max coming second in the Grand Prix in Sweden on the weekend. You know, puts himself in prime position, doesn't it? And, and Jack, you're up there, you know, third in the world. Um, it's hard to look past them, but uh, Brady, like Brady's form, has been you know, as good as anybody's. You know, in the qualifiers that uh, you know he, he out um, you know in a runoff with uh, Robert Lambert, you know, he got placed in Zanovich. So yeah, there's some um, 
diff, a tough decisions to be made for the team in Australia. Losing Jason Doyle is a massive blow for us. You know, he's 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 team you know Australia through and through. There's, there's not a prouder man. Never ever once does he thinks he's entitled to a, a team position. Um, and he'll like obviously he's, he's one of the guys. You know, am I going to get selected? And, you know, he's always you know you know curious to see where he's in that that pecking order. But um, he's out of the equation, unfortunately. Brady Kurtz is uh, still there uh, potentially, and we've seen him race with with the injury, so he's he's clearly still riding well. But he's got to manage that injury, as we we talked on earlier in the program. Um, so, you know, you you've got to look at that, and then obviously we've got a top five that we've got to, we've got to choose and um, and go with. But um, yeah, it's it's not never an easy decision as a manager to to put the guys out there because um, the guys that miss out. You know they they've got uh, their their races in the, the day and they're quite self centered and they, they they think they're they're better than uh, the other guys that you've picked and uh, they they feel sort of you know not loved and <laughs> sort of unfortunately they have to miss out but it's it's hard to make those decisions it's really tough it's, it's not the nicest part of the job I must admit um, but you know when we go racing on race day once the other boys are you know all saddled up and they're green and gold um, it's a different uh, matter altogether. And it's going to be amazing to see, you know, as you say, some of the world's stars all all racing again at the National Speedway Stadium. Um, obviously, Australia, previous winners recently. Uh, prior to that, of course, Great Britain. So two teams there that uh, have got um, some good pedigree in this tournament. It's not a tournament, historically, that, that Poland go well in. Uh, it's not their favourite at all. They won the Speedway World Cup, but the Speedway of Nations they always struggle with. Um, Matt Sejanowski, I know that we did a, a track walk at Bellevue with him on BSN, and, uh, and he said that he, he can't look at that corner where it all went wrong for him in that in that grand final of the Speedway of Nations uh, the last time it was uh, it was in Manchester. But that's part of the drama, isn't it, of Speedway? Part of the beauty of it that you might have these these names on the team sheet, but until the the event happens and, and you're there, you just never know. What's what's going to happen in Speedway? Yeah, and that was a pretty special couple of days in Manchester in 2021. Um, and like, yeah, I've never seen the stadium you know erupt like it did in that final. It was uh, it was quite something. And hopefully, you know, it's 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 nicely poised, isn't it? Really, you know, you've got you know three you know British Grand Prix riders you know battling out for the, the you know, team of two, um, and you've got Bartosz Smarzing leading the Polish way. Um, you know, Australia reigning champions in the, in the Speedway Nations. Poland's never won it. England won it, or Team GB won it uh, in 2020, 2021 on home soil here in the National Speedway Stadium. And, you know, there's, you know Denmark obviously, you know, have got uh, some, you know, catching up to do, but you'd never outrule them. Three Lingrens on good form. You know, it, there's a lot to like about this event. Um, you know, and, and to get through from the semi finals is going to be pretty tough because you've got, you know, the French are going quite well. Um, you know the Slovenians. You know maybe Matty Zagar in the lineup. Um, yeah, there's, there's a host of them. So um, yeah, it's going to be a great, great week, great carnival. I can't wait for it to come along. Uh, probably as a promoter, I can't wait for it to be over either. And uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of sleepless nights between now and then. But uh, now we're pretty excited here in Manchester to, to have the Speedway Nations, and I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a, a belter of a night. Fantastic, and and when um, do you know when the teams are yet to be announced? Is there is, the, is it like the week before or two weeks before? Or yeah, so basically uh, the teams are, are submitted today, um, uh, obviously Tuesday the eighteenth uh, of June, and then um, and then six days prior they they do the final selections. So I would imagine in the next couple, coming days you'll you'll see some more um, movement for the teams and squads. Um, yep, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's starting to hot up. It's getting pretty close. Um, you know, lots of, uh, you know, back and forth with, uh, you know, the selections and who's in and who's out. Um, so, yeah, not, like I said, not a, not a pleasant time as a team manager, but uh, it's quite exciting times for a rider if you get chosen. Right, so we we catch you on a hot day then. Uh, the, uh, the the names have gone in. Well, not quite yet. <laughs> There's still a few hours to go. Uh, all right, but, okay. Still, but, uh, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's day. Still time for a change of heart. Okay. Um, well, look, it's. Uh, Hotting up on all fronts. It'd be good to see um, Bellevue back on the track and uh, everybody can watch wherever they are on uh, Eurosport Discovery Plus on uh, Monday uh, for the visit of Leicester. But before that, uh, you're on the road at Olerton 
uh, for the fixture against Sheffield. And then Speedway of Nations, um, get your tickets, I guess is the message, isn't it? It's, it's, did I see that some parts of the main grandstand now sold out for the final? So it's, it's uh, you know, it's looking uh, like it's filling up for the main event. Yeah, the, the, the Saturday uh, sections, uh, C, D and E have completely sold out. And uh, A and B, there's, there's a few tickets available. Um, so yeah, so it's 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 it, the sales are going quite good. They're sped, sped up in the last sort of uh, week or so, so that's great to see. Um, so yeah, no, it's, the sales are going well. So hopefully we can sell out that grandstand, and obviously we have got the the east grandstand that uh, holds over three thousand seats. So um, hopefully that can be full as well. So it'll be amazing. You know, when I, I remember back in two thousand sixteen when we had the uh, two thousand oh, the, the World Cup here. And we had the big grandstand on turns three and four, and it was just a, an amazing sight. And I, I can't wait. That's that build starts soon, so it's going to be quite exciting. I think when that actually starts to, to you know, come together and, and it this, this gets built, I think that's when uh, it will hit me that it's happening. So um, yeah, so it's been a long road to get to here to get this opportunity to, to host this event, and then hopefully there's some brighter, brighter things and bigger, bigger events to come. So. Uh, we hope to see a lot of people here in Manchester. But like I said, uh, you can go onto the Bellevue website uh, and uh, get your tickets. Yeah, support it, folks. A simple message there that if you want uh, big events at Manchester in future, then this is the event uh, you need to get on with uh, with first. And uh, it's going to be a big event, isn't it, Lemo? It's not just about the uh, the, the, the racing itself. It's going to be a whole day out. Yeah, I, but I think that the, the whole week, you know, we've got the fan zone on, on the top pitch behind like, turns three and four. So, you know, that... It's, you know, it's not just the speedway event. You know, what Warner Brothers bring, they, they bring out sort of a, a carnival and plenty of things happening, plenty of things that, to see and do and, and speedway orientated. And obviously the, the racing's you know, the feather in the cap. Brilliant. Well, all the best for the event. I'm sure it'll go absolutely splendidly and uh, we'll be talking about it for years. But 9th to the 13th of July, uh, make sure you get there. And of course, there is another thing that you can bolt on that as well. I need to mention the day after, uh, the 14th of July, it's the Ben Fund meeting at Workington as well. So that's uh, there purposely because they're trying to, uh, Paul Ackroyd's got his uh, fishing rod out, trying to hook a few uh, the world's stars up to work- Workington the day after. So um, if you want to make it an even longer weekend of Speedway, then uh, you can always go to Workington on the Sunday uh, once uh, Mark's having a, a lie down in a darkened room after the excitement, uh, you can go there and uh, and and support the Speedway ben- Benevolent Fund with uh, some uh, great riders as well. So I'll sneak that in there. But all the best for that, and uh, we'll see you at the track soon. All right, great stuff. Cheers, Ian. My thanks to Mark Lemon, CEO and team manager of the Bellevue Aces and also team manager of Team Australia as well uh, for joining us on No Breaks, No Fear. And uh, yeah, get yourself along to the Speedway of Nations in July for a festival of Speedway right here in the UK and Manchester as well. Coming up in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, we'll turn our attention a little bit on the Cab Direct Championship, update you on the uh, stories there and look ahead to the fixtures coming up over the next week. And we'll hear from Mike Boswell, who once again is gearing up to uh, fire some hot questions at one of Speedway's big stars. Matt Sayanovsky got himself 16 points for the Oxford Spires against Kings Lynn on Monday. How will he do with Mike's testing questions? Find out very soon on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Rounding up a few uh, bits from the Cab Direct Championship. Now, Red Car raced to a third win in four Cab Direct Championship matches as they overcame Edinburgh 49 41 at the Echo Arena. A close meeting going down to a last heat decider with four points between the sides in that race. The Bears captain Charles Wright and the returning from injury Danny King took a 5 1 over Paco Castagna and Josh Pickering. Wright top scored for a solid Red Car side with 12 plus 1 bonus. Danny King adding 10 plus 1 whilst Edinburgh had the majority of the race winners with Paco Castagna collecting 11 points, Josh Pickering with 10 plus 1 but they were outscored lower down the order. A couple of interviews from that one at the Echo Arena. Uh, we'll hear from Paco Castagna of the Edinburgh Monarchs in a moment. First of all, Danny King. Yeah, I stayed on the bike this week so it's a bonus. Um, I was happy. Yeah, I weren't sure what to expect but um, I felt comfortable and that's the main thing and uh, I scored some good points so a lot to take from tonight. It's nice to be back. And some some good wins as well for you personally and, and teaming up 
with Charles Wright in Heat 15 to secure it. And you just needed the, the two yeah. points, I suppose, out of the heat. But nonetheless, there's always a threat there with, with a strong Edinburgh lineup. There is. They've got good riders. And I made a big mistake in Heat 13 on the last corner coming in tight. You know, that was just a bit of, bit of a mistake for myself, really. So that was frustrating to throw away the paid win there. But we got it in the end and we got the win over the line, which is the most important thing. And how are you feeling after it? How's the hand holding up? It's good, yeah. It's, it's aching a bit, but more my arms, I think. A bit of arm pump. I'm probably holding on a little bit tighter than I than I need to. But I suppose that's a, that's obvious considering I've had a hand injury. So I felt good. I didn't feel, uh, you know, out of control or unsafe at any point. I felt my old self. I could ride the dirt, so it ticks all the boxes. Back at Castagna, frustrating night, I guess, for the Monarchs. Um, so near, but so close. For yourself personally, though, you got off to a great start and you, you had a good night uh, in Monarchs colours yourself this evening. Yeah, of course. I'm um, very, very frustrated about the um, team result. I really felt we were doing very good and I'm not saying that we should have won, but I felt like we were very close to doing that and I think the score shows it. Shows it. Um, I'm very happy about my performance, uh, apart from 15 where I completely missed the game. But now nah, I'm, I'm, the team is doing very good, to be honest. I, I feel the team spirit is, is high, but we just we just missed it at the end, and that was a bit of a shame. I feel like I'm uh, I'm doing okay, you know. After finding the problems that I had at Oxford uh, uh, at the away meeting a couple of weeks ago, now I'm, I'm doing much better, and I'm and I'm feeling like I'm scoring well as well. It's just that. Those away wins, they still get to get an away win in the league. Frustrating, as I say, close, but uh, you got that first win on the board at home last week, so that home form, obviously, you're going to need to carry that on. Yeah, 100%, and uh, we got an another another home match next week, which is going to be crucial. Uh, I feel like at home we are very, very strong, and we showed it. Uh, we win against the best teams in, in the league. Um, I feel like we can do very good, and I feel like with the score, that we had tonight, we can also get the bonus point against Redcar whenever they will come over. So I feel like we're strong, it's just to take it to the end, you know. We started strong, we kept it in the middle, we just needed a little, little extra at the end. So again, we're good and, and it's just about making it click till the end. We'll run through the full fixtures in a moment. Um, Redcar will be back on BSN on Friday this week when they take on the Oxford Cheaters. Meanwhile, the Plymouth Gladiators return to winning ways, defeating the Berwick Bandits 53-37, despite another setback for Ben Barker, the Gladiators' captain, withdrawn from the meeting after a Heat 7 crash, but his teammates still pulling off the victory over the Bandits. Uh, let's have a look then at what that means for the uh, Cab Direct Championship table. And um, things starting to, uh, to to close up a little bit there now as uh, the various sides uh, even out on meetings in some quarters. So the Scunthorpe Scorpions still leading the way on uh, 10 points on the board, five meetings ridden. Just behind them, though, the Pool Pirates, four meetings ridden and nine points. Workington Comets have ridden six and have also got nine. The Oxford Cheaters have ridden five and are on seven. And the top four is uh, what qualifies for the playoffs. Uh, currently joint with Oxford are the Berwick Bandits, but they've ridden eight meetings and seven points. Nine meetings ridden for the Red Car Bears, who move up to sixth after that win that uh, we just talked about over the Edinburgh Monarchs. They've got six points. Uh, below them are the Plymouth Gladiators in seventh, five meetings ridden and five points. Glasgow Tigers are eighth. They've ridden three and they've got two points. And the Edinburgh Monarchs still remain at the foot of the table, uh, having ridden five meetings with two points so far. So looking ahead to the fixture picture in the week coming up and uh, starting with the Speedway action on Wednesday and uh, in the Cab Direct Championship, it's the Oxford Cheaters versus the Pool Pirates. That starts at 7.30, bit of a, a local derby as such, you might say there. That one will also be on BSN on Wednesday evening. Thursday, it's Row Motor All Premiership action, as we mentioned, and it's Ipswich versus Leicester, Sheffield versus Bellevue. Friday, back to the Cab Direct Championship, Edinburgh Monarchs versus the Scunthorpe Scorpions. That will be live on Edinburgh's own uh, streaming service, EMTV, on their website. Site, Glasgow Tigers versus the Berwick Bandits. That starts at 7.30. And on BSN uh, will be the fixture at Redcar at the Echo Arena. Redcar Bears versus the Oxford Cheaters. And it's uh, Redcar 36, Ox 
Oxford 53 at the halfway stage regards the aggregate bonus point. Saturday, uh, more action on BSN. Cab Direct Championship, Berwick Bandits versus the Glasgow Tigers getting underway at 7 o'clock and the Workington Comets race against top of the table Scunthorpe Scorpions. That could be a pivotal one as far as the uh, the table looks. Uh, again, a 3 o'clock start there at uh, the GT Tyres Arena at Workington. We've got uh, National Development League action on Sunday between Leicester and Oxford at 3 o'clock. And then next Monday, back to the Premiership. Row Motor All Premiership, Birmingham versus Kings Lynn at 7.30. And uh, that fixture at the National Speedway Stadium, Bellevue versus Leicester. And that also live on Eurosport and Discovery Plus on Monday night. Before we go then, we'll round up by hearing from one of this week's top stars in Speedway. It's taken him a bit of time to get to grips with things. But uh, flying in his meeting on Monday in front of the TV cameras was Matt Sayanowski, bagging himself 16 points. So it's only right we get to know the man a little bit better. And Mike Boswell, our intrepid reporter, has been asking the questions to Matt Sayanowski. First time you rode a Speedway bike? Um, first time? That's a hard, hard one. Um, that was a long time ago. But probably 2000, 2004? Long time ago, long 20, time. Yes, 20 about years, 20 years ago. ago. yeah. And uh, was that at a youth track, like a, a small track, a training track? Yes. Um, in the beginning, we used to uh, we used to train on on, on smaller tracks, uh, uh, junior tracks. Um, yeah. Ne- uh, the first time was near to Wrocław. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And people who've helped you with your speedway career? My father. That's a. That, as the main guy um, who start everything and, and let us and give us chance in this in, in, in this sport. First of all, I, I start with my uh, with my brother and uh, and we've been doing this together. But uh, then after some uh, big crash, my older brother decided to move back a little bit and um, and stay more in in the pit than mm-hmm. on the on the track. So um, yeah, but everything start. Uh, with my father's passion, and uh, he was the one who let us do it. So, does your brother sometimes come and help out? Yeah, um, at the moment, my both brothers work with me yeah. uh, on full time. So um, we have very family team: uh, two brothers and uh, one of my best friends, w- what I used to grow up with. Uh, so I can also. Uh, name name him as a as a brother so yeah. uh, family team and uh, yeah it's working good and what do you reckon the the best thing is about speedway the best thing about a speedway speed uh, emotion mm-hmm. adrenaline in there adrenaline right? of course if i was to ask your friends about you what would they say what would they how would they describe you <laughs> <laughs> quiet fun pretty mellow if you go back a few years to like when you used to be able to load stuff onto your iPod, or what would you, what would we have found, what would we find on your your iPod? What kind of music taste do you have? Oh, um, from the young age, I used to, uh, I used to listen a lot of rap, hip hop music. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends what used to uh, work with Summer Malenko, and. Uh, he used to show me some some good music, good Polish rap music. Um, so I spent with him for a, a couple of weeks in in Halstavik, uh, where we've been uh, preparing uh, bikes for Greg. He used to prepare for uh, uh, for uh, Janusz Kowodzie, but uh, yeah, I spent with him f- two or three weeks, and I remember that he load on my computer a lot of a lot of good music so probably he was the one who uh, who put me on that direction so you got guided by somebody else uh, as to what to listen yes to. yes pretty, mu- pretty much but uh, at the moment I'm I'm listening a lot of different kind of music and different kind of stuff so and it's so general kind of question when you hop on a plane and there's a lot of travel involved in Speedway is it always aisle Middle middle seat or window seat? Window seat. Why window Definitely. seat? Because I need to I need to put my head somewhere, and it's always 
3A. Uh, I always reserve the same seat. So you the you <laughs> you know exactly what the seat is, what the window yes, is. I did, yeah, the, exactly. I know where is the window, how much space I have for my head. Everything is planned. Post Speedway, what what would you like to go and do? You know, once you once you stop riding, what what career would you like to go and do? Um, to be honest, uh, at the moment I try to uh, most of the profits I try to invest to not think about what I need to do straight away after I finish my career, speedway career. Uh, of course, I would like to do uh, or stay in the sport, mm. but uh, I don't want to be be stressed that uh, on the next day or of my finished career uh, I need to. I need to uh, go to to work. I, I didn't think about that uh, at the moment, you know. Yeah. Uh, I try to focus on uh, on on racing, and I'm I'm not f- focused uh, about finishing. So um, it's not it's not uh, time yet for it's, that. It's not top of mind. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, fair enough. And sort of, you know, um, obviously a lot of time spent traveling. We've kind of said about that already, but. What are you binge watching at the moment? What is your? What's the last film you watched? What's the last kind of series that you watched? Um, l- um, last, of course, I watched some Polish uh, Polish stuff. But uh, um, two weeks ago, I I watched uh, David Beckham documentary. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was amazing. Um, what else? So is is football something you've also followed? Yes, of course. I love I love football. I'm I'm a huge fan of football. Maybe not. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, one of these fans. What you know, follow the statistics or yeah, follow oh, yeah. the the names who is changing the teams. Uh, I love sports. You know, I love competition. I love to watch how people compare. And uh, mm, yeah, it was it was always very interesting for me how 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 everything can go you know uh, so I'm, I'm i'm just fan of the sport what do you do to switch off i'm i'm, I'm pretty busy, busy person so um uh, uh, behind of uh, behind of the speedway i do uh, i do a lot of different things what helps me to uh, to switch off my head i d- i play a lot of golf i cycling a lot uh, i have beautiful family mm-hmm. uh, so, um, so uh, every every of this thing need uh, a lot of time. So, uh, when I finish, uh, when I come back from Speedway, I am switch off for Family Guy. Fair enough. And, yeah, Family takes a long that's, time. That's that's yeah, that helps a lot for sure. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. Really in- in- insightful. Um, cheers for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, Magic Yanovsky. And uh, is he watching Family Guy or does he mean he is a Family Guy? Maybe we need to get some clarification there because uh, that sort of left me wondering. But uh, sitting in seat 3A, listening to his Polish rap on full blast, Magic Yanovsky and a bit of an insight into the man there who got 16 points uh, in the meeting on Monday. Have a great week ahead in Speedway, whatever uh, fixture you're uh, heading to or taking in or watching live. Don't forget that uh, fixture on Eurosport next week featuring our main guest's team, Mark Lemon. Uh, and uh, it's the um, Bellevue Aces against the Leicester Lions on Monday night in the Rome Motor All Premiership. And don't forget to get your tickets for the Speedway of Nations as well. As Mark Lemon was saying, really, you know, it is a big undertaking for Bellevue to put this uh, massive fixture on in this, uh, in this modern world. And uh, if you'd like to see major events back in Manchester in the future then need as many people to, uh, to to back this one as possible don't sit on your hands and wait for next time uh, this is the one that uh, they're being judged on so uh, get yourself uh, in there uh, and uh, bellevue-speedway.com is their web address if you want to get hold of the tickets we'll be back with another episode next week of No Breaks No Fear till then have a safe week and we'll catch you next time bye bye No Breaks No Fear The official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.